Okay, we have here to another integral on the board. I've got the integral of x times sine x dx. And actually what I wanted to do here is I'm revisiting an old video I did in I think 2020 or maybe 2021. And I don't even know where that video is anymore. But what I did was I used integration by parts on this and I ran into an interesting situation. So for integration by parts, let's just look at the DI method or tabular integration. We're gonna have two columns, one to differentiate, one to integrate. And when we choose, you know, we have two functions here, x and sine x. We usually choose our functions to make it easier on ourselves. Now for like sine x, whether we differentiate or integrate, it's just gonna persist over and over again. So we're just gonna get cosine, sine, sine, cosine. But we like to differentiate x typically and set it up this way. Because when we do that and we take a derivative of x, we get one. We do it again, we get zero. And then it finishes really fast. So what I wanna do instead today is make it harder on ourselves and switch these. And what I'm gonna do is instead of differentiating x, we'll differentiate sine x and we'll integrate x. And now along the left here, we're gonna to wanna to alternate signs, but I'm gonna to want to do a lot of rows because we wanna see this pattern. So I'm just gonna create as many rows as I can. And so we'll differentiate sine x and we get cosine x. We'll differentiate again, we get minus sine x. And we'll just keep going like this to fill up our table. Next, I'll go ahead and we'll integrate x. And so first we're gonna have x squared over two. I'll do it again and we get x cubed over six, but I'm gonna write my six as three factorial. And actually going back, notice I can write two as two factorial. And then I can write this x to the fourth over four factorial. And this is just gonna follow this pattern and go on and on this way. And I'll just write with factorials for all these. And so you can kind of see the problem we created where nothing ever terminates and we're just gonna get more and more terms. So this is just gonna continue on and on forever. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna to try to total up our solution and see what's happening and look for a pattern. So we're gonna have part of our solution on the diagonals. And I think what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna separate the sines from the cosines. So just writing down our solution, I'm gonna factor out a sine x, but actually what I wanna do, I think I actually wanna factor out a minus sine x just because we're gonna have a bunch of minuses in here. So let's see how this goes. So our first term is gonna be, I need to change the sign here, so we're gonna have minus x squared over two factorial. And then for this one, it's gonna become a plus x to, x to the fourth over four factorial. And then let's see, this one's gonna be a minus x to the sixth. And then something similar for the cosines, we're just gonna factor out cosine of x. So for these terms, first one we have a minus here, so this is gonna be minus x cubed over three factorial. And then here for the x to the fifth, we have minus times minus, so plus this is gonna be plus x to the five, five factorial. And now at this point, the way we have it set up, you may now recognize that this is really similar to power series for sine and cosine right here. Okay, now we have our formulas for the power series for cosine and sine down here at the bottom of the board. And we're really close to what we have in parentheses here. So what we have for this top one, this is actually this just this part of the expansion for cosine x right here. And then for this, we have this is almost the same kind of thing where it's everything except for the x. So what that's gonna allow me to do is I can rewrite this expression using this power series. So we have our minus sine x here, but this whole thing is just gonna be cosine x minus one, just subtracting off that one right there. So I can write this as cosine x minus one. And then coming down to this piece, here we have cosine x, but this piece right here is just gonna be sine x minus x. So we can just write this in right here. So the way it works out, I'm just gonna to need to distribute this in here and in here and simplify, and then we should be done. So we're gonna end up here. We have minus sine x cos x. This is gonna become, multiplying into the one, this is gonna be plus sine x. Here we're gonna have a plus sine x cosine x, just changing the order. And then here we're gonna have minus x cosine x. Then minus sine x cos x plus sine x cos x, these terms are gonna cancel. And we're just left with our final solution sine x minus x cosine x plus c, and that's it. And so again, I wouldn't say this is the easier way to use integration by parts. It's a little longer, but we do get the same answer. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.